Good afternoon and welcome to FMT Raw. I'm Stephanie Stamaria. Today with us in the studio is someone who has been getting a lot of media attention of late. This is Dato Abita Srinivasan, the co-chairperson of Bursay 3.0. Dato, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Okay, we still have a whole lot of questions despite you being interviewed and, and participating in debates and such. And um, you too can ask uh, Dato Abita your questions via Facebook or Twitter. The hashtag is FMT Raw. First question, Dato. Has there been a change in sentiment between Bursay 2 and Bursay 3? And if there has been, what kind of change is that? As far as the government is concerned, I certainly see a change in the attitude towards uh, the peaceful assembly. Uh, you would have noticed what the minister said, that, the, that we are not a security threat, not considered a security threat, and that um, uh, you know, the government was uh, open to a peaceful assembly. Uh, as far as the rakyat or the supporters of the Bursay cause are concerned, I think um, their sentiments remain the same. Uh, there is a general feeling that uh, the 13th general elections are going to be upon us very soon, but not enough has been done to reform the system, to make it truly uh, clean and fair. Okay. And, and how have you changed as a person from then to now? Uh, I don't know that I've changed at all, actually, because the mission remains the same. Okay. Uh, the ultimate goal remains the same. Um, I suppose... Um, I went through a lot in Bursay 2, I went through a lot last year, so I have become a little more, uh, I have steeled myself, but uh, I'm pleasantly surprised that it hasn't been as bad as it was last year, but apart from that, for me, the, the cause, the mission remains the same. Okay. Um, while we were compiling the questions just now, one, one of us wanted to know, um, are you disappointed that this time you didn't receive a death threat? <laughs> Uh, not at all disappointed. No, I was very grateful not to have received a death threat. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you know, Versailles is not going to be the only ones who's going to be going to the ground on Saturday. There's also going to be various other groups, including Himpunan Kijau 3.0. How do you feel about these other NGOs um, riding on uh, Versailles? You know, um, let me talk about Himpunan uh, 3.0 because they're the, they're the ones who asked us and, right. and we said yes. Uh, we feel that they issue and their cause is just as important uh, and urgent as Bursi's cause because what's happening there in Kwantan is a great concern not just to them but to the whole of uh, all Malaysians. So we feel that ultimately we are all seeking the same thing. We're seeking a more open society, um, we're seeking basic democratic rights which of course includes uh, a right to clean environment which is the cause that they are uh, pushing for. So, and as far as other NGOs, look, we are an NGO-driven movement. We are happy that people support the movement. And we have always maintained that the invitation is open to everyone, including political parties, all political parties, uh, to come and support the Versailles cause. You've extended the same as last time, you extended the invitation to all the political parties, and uh, Pakatan has again come on board. The last time Bursay and yourself were fleeing for being linked to the, the opposition, uh, what about this time? What are the sentiments? You know? Well, people will still do that because um, it, it's typical. Because when they do that, it's like uh, give a dog a bad name and hang them. When they do that and they attack you on issues like that, then they don't have to deal with the real issues here, which is the issue of free and fair elections. So they attack you, they use collateral attacks. We're used to that now, uh, and it didn't detract uh, from the main cause the last time, and it will not detract from the main cause this time. We asked if you could bring in some t-shirts, and we brought in two, and you said that it's selling at a thousand a day. Yes. Does that mean that we could possibly reach that 500,000 mark? Well, you know, you never know. Well, we, we said 500,000 worldwide. Uh, when I say per day, every time we get, I mean, it takes two, three days to get an order through. Uh, but it's just that we just don't have enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not just us that's selling it, the people who are selling it out there, which is fine with us. Um, so yes, I think uh, whether people are going to be out there with us, they are there with us in spirit, I'm telling you. It is unbelievable what we're seeing. We have over 70 countries internationally who are taking part. Um, and last time it was 32. So I, I think there's a big jump 
with time and the number of supporters that we can see. Okay. Speaking of the uh, number of supporters now, um, we heard an allegation that uh, Bursi is actually paying people to turn up for the rally on Saturday. Uh, well, I mean, you know, the facts speak for themselves. Why do we need to do that when we're selling our t-shirts to the rally? Yeah. And um, we don't, let me assure you, we don't need to pay anyone to turn up for this rally. Okay. Um, I want to we don't have the money as well, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we had a meeting when when the minister announced on Sunday evening that uh, uh, suggestion of Stadium Radeka and uh, Bukit Jalil. We held an emergency meeting on Monday night of all the endorsing NGOs uh, because Stadium Radeka was always, you know, a, a possibility. Now, um, but unfortunately, on the Monday morning. DBKL wrote to us, giving us two other facts. So, but at that meeting, it was very clear because the NGOs are the ones who are mobilizing people. And they said it is, even at that stage, it would be really difficult to change course because we are expecting people in numbers. And um, it's very hard for us to change course. And we said to the mayor that we thought it would create more chaos if you changed it now because people will go to both places. And it actually, it will become even more difficult for them to handle it. So in our view, uh, if, if Monday night or Tuesday was already too late, certainly when the offer was made by DBKL yesterday, it would have been very difficult to change direction. Okay. Um, one of the veteran military leaders, uh, Azit, he said today that you know, the whole idea is to protest. Does it matter where the protesting is done? Well, um, to me, I mean, he's entitled to his view. He's also entitled to come or not come. Mm -hmm. uh, and many people hold his views, so, you know, uh, no issue with that. But we had actually chosen the location. Datara and Merdeka has significance. Apart from the historical significance, it is a public space. And the public have access to it all the time. It is a place that is very easy to get into and very easy to get out, uh, out of. And um, actually, there, there will be less disruption because it's not that near, you know, uh, places of, of business. I actually think there will be uh, um, an upsurge of business in that area when, when they see, when, when, you know, I mean, if you set up a stall selling ice water, you would still, you know, you would yeah, make yeah. money that day. So, but, but the point is this, it really, there, there, there can be no objection to Dutta and mm -hmm. And we showed that DBKL had actually uh, let Dutta and Mareka out, even to private companies, and then we, we gave a list of events. So what we cannot understand is why that is different from ours. 